Tuesday night, Sports Fix. Clayton not with us, but the flow man with you. And one of our really interesting Friday night guests is Carl Carrington. Hey, Carl, how are you? Very good, Wayne. Pleasure to join you. And I know that you're interesting because you've covered a lot of AFLW for us this year and also some of the women's games. But we've got some AFL to talk about tonight. And I thought that we would start with this question that you asked me today when we're sitting at our desks. You reached across uh, to my glass little portal where I hide behind my screen (laughs) and you said Wayne who's going to win the AFL Premiership and I answered firmly the Adelaide Crows. Yeah and I nearly fell out of my seat. (laughs) Yes and of course uh, I had a moment of insanity too because uh, I have the passion and I love my club and that's what the start of AFL season's about. Carl anyone can win this season. But I don't think the Adelaide Crows can. <laughs> no, neither do I. <laughs> but it would be a fascinating competition if they came from bottom to top and in 18 teams across that competition were able to do it. So who do you think is going to win the uh, AFL Premiership this year? Yeah, it pains to say me as a Port Adelaide fan, but I think Geelong are, really, are looking really good this year. And what they've recruited and the people that, the, that they have recruited in, um, in Cameron up forward um, and also licking their wounds from that grand final loss against Richmond... They, uh, they could be up and about, and I think that they will be having a real push this year. I also think, obviously, Richmond will be uh, up firmly up the top of the ladder, and uh, Port Adelaide and Brisbane as well. So I think it'll be a similar top four to what we had last year. I'm going to make the comment, I reckon the dynasty for Richmond is over. I'm just um, putting it out there before the season starts. I haven't seen Dustin Martin touch the footy yet, but I'm sure he'll come back full of energy and vigour. But just feel that uh, the issues that Richmond are going to encounter as you get to that place where your list starts to need to be turned over again and to maintain that to brilliance. Hawthorne have been there in recent years. That to need to actually get that talent at the bottom end underneath and the salary cap issues at the top end, I think it's going to pay against Richmond this year. I'd have to disagree with you. I actually think that the Richmond um, sort of lesser likes compared to Dustin and, and Trent Cochin and those types in, in Jaden Short and Camden McIntosh and the, especially the people they have off half-back, the half-back flank, are looking really strong and they really impressed me in pre-season. So... I have to firmly uh, disagree with you there, Wayne, because I think Richmond are well and truly one of the uh, best sides in the competition, and they usually are pretty slow starters. The uh, last couple of years, they've sort of gone, you know, six and six or six and seven halfway through the season uh, in in wins and losses. That is, but they usually storm home and they uh, they play very well when it comes to the finals and the real stuff. Like what you're saying, and uh, like your passion, even though you're not a Richmond man, and there's a few people listening across the Flow broadcast areas who have just fell in love with Carl Carrington. (laughs) There's a lot of yellow and black out there, but uh, let's uh, put it out there for everyone that's listening now. Who do you think is going to win this premiership race? Uh, The question is a fair one that everyone starts to put. This weekend, uh, we get a look at AFL for the first time, the backdrop of which is that this is a uh, situation where COVID-19 rules, all of the kind of nervousness around whether or not we might have to hub in Melbourne if somebody decides to get nervous nervous on border security and all of a sudden we're all waiting to see who wins the first game Richmond come out against Carlton they get them first up they've done that in the last number of seasons the traditional opener it's a good one isn't it yeah and it definitely is Carlton playing well enough to beat Richmond I wouldn't go that far uh, I think Carlton's still on their upward trajectory and Richmond is still a formidable outfit so I don't think that Carlton will win this game but it'll definitely uh, be a good test of to see against uh, the reigning premiers of where they're at and hopefully if they put on a good showing it could build uh, the blue bag as fans with some hope uh, in the hope of playing finals hope early in the season uh, mind you and I think all of us are hoping for a good start for our club but what about some of the players yeah I know that you play the uh, fantasy game and I just reckon that the game's the game and no other games within the game are actually necessary but apparently you want to win the Hilux is that right definitely I'd love a Hilux man (laughs) who (laughs) wouldn't I reckon you're going in for the fantasies okay putting my money on a fantasy player who's good value value for all of our younger people, and maybe those not so young who want to win the Hilux like you, Carl. Who do you reckon they should have a look at in the fantasy game? Well, the number one lock, and you have to have this player if you're going to do any any good in fantasy this year, is Matt Rowe. 
He's wow. he's coming back off injury. He uh, he did his shoulder in round four, I believe, last year. He was locked and loaded for the Rising Star, and uh, even a Brownlow Brownlow favorite early on. Mm. Um, so he's definitely a, a lock, and also Max Gorn in the ruck. There's Ooh. there's not really there's the top end talent in the ruck department with Max Gorn and Brody Grundy is really strong, but then it sort of falls off after that. You've got the likes of Riley O'Brien who come in after that. So yeah, Max Gorn and uh, Matt Rowell are the two. Top two that you have to have in your side, basically. What about Isaac Rankin? Uh, do you think that you would um, risk some uh, points on Isaac? And I know you mentioned the big ROB and the Crows Ruckman. I reckon this year, given he won the yellow jacket at the Crows, or the gold jacket, the other Jack Nicholas of golf, uh, that magnificent uh, Best and Ferris Award at the Crows, mm. even though they came right last on the Premiership table... Big Riley O'Brien, I reckon he's due for a really big season. And if he goes um, out there and doesn't get injured this year, I think he's a real chance for all Australian ruckmen because I think the Crows will improve and I think he will be part of the reason. Yeah, well, firstly, to your to your initial point with Isaac Rankin, I think he's priced at sort of the mid-400s, which is sort of the no-go zone in fantasy. You're looking at rookies who are below that 250 mark and premiums who are sort of above that 650 mark. So he's in that red zone where you don't really touch him. And he's he's going to be a forward and he's not going to get the ball too much um, for the sun. So, But for Riley O'Brien, I think definitely uh, he could be looking at a big season. I think the uh, the impact of Riley Philthorpe will be interesting to see how that mm-hmm. limits his game or makes his game shine in a more positive sense. So it'll be interesting uh, the impact that Riley has and some of those other tools if they share ruck duties or if they solely leave it to Riley O'Brien to take that workload. And I think when the Crows uh, at their early pick picked up Phil Thorpe, I think that the reasoning behind that was that they're looking to the future. Big men don't actually perform at the highest level until their early 20s, sometimes their mid-20s is when they really come on. They tend to grow into the into the game, don't they? They do, and I think Phil Thorpe is going to be in that category. I think Riley O'Brien is actually, uh, he's had that apprenticeship time. He had big Sam Jacobs there as a mentor. He then took the opportunity when Sam got injured and suddenly Sam couldn't fight his way back into the side because Riley grabbed it with both big hands and he's going to be a good player. What about on the power side? I know that you're a power man and you've really uh, you've screwed up your face three or four times when I mentioned the Crows here. You've just really struggled with the conversation. But <laughs> what about these power boys? Is anything less than a grand final appearance this year for the power and even a premiership? Is that Hinkley swan song? Does Hinkley have to deal this year for the power? I mean, ultimately last year... Year. They got to a prelim. They played on their home deck. They took on a side that grafted out a win in what was, I reckon, ugly football. Horrendous really conditions. Put it there. Yep. Shocking conditions. But yep. let's put it bluntly, it was six goals apiece, I think, at the end of it. And uh, it, in the end, to me, it was a fall over the line win. And, and while Richmond grafted out an absolute tough win in those appalling conditions, it to me, Port Adelaide, do they... Now, fall from grace now, or do you think that they've improved with their pickups in the off season? I definitely think they've improved with the uh, acquisition of Alir Alir in particular. I also think Orazio Fantasia is a really smart pickup more than anything in terms of forward coverage, and he can f- be flexible to come in and out of that side if needs be. He'd be hoping to be playing all 22 games, but th- there's a lot of coverage in that forward area. In terms of making a grand final or bust type season, I'd actually say so because they've had a good run at it now. The team is progressing well enough and the younger players aren't too young now to have an excuse to not make the grand final. They've, they're have they entering into their early 20s and, and they're becoming a really strong side that should be aiming for those types of accolades. So, yeah, a grand final would be uh, definitely high on their, on their uh, radar. All right, uh, the premiership window is open, is what you're saying, and I'm going to watch with some interest. Uh, the Crows to make the eight was my earlier prediction three weeks ago. Might have got a little excited about their drafting. Uh, perhaps might be 10 to 12, maybe. I thought, I thought you were drunk when you said that, Wayne, to no, be honest. don't drink very heavily, as many know, but uh, perhaps uh, the effects of m- many road trips and a lack of sleep might have caused a little bit of excitement in the uh, Crows camp. But uh, this is a good season. And good Carl Carrington from our Friday Night Sports Show and our Flow News 24 desk to hear your thoughts on AFL here on the Sports Fix. Thank you, Wayne.